Hey guys, I'm coming to you live from my living room. Today I'm going to talk to you in my DJ voice. This is a radio voice that I picked up years ago when I was a DJ on a radio station. 99.9 KISW, more pure rock, no useless talk. 99.9 KISW. And now a twisted tune coming to you live from Seattle, Washington in the heart of the Northwest. Oh yeah. <laughs> and of course my battery died <laughs> right in the middle of me vlogging I hate when that happens it's happened to me about three times oh god it's annoying <laughs> no I bring that voice up because um, I can't remember his name but I'm sure if you are a big YouTube person, you've seen it. There was a homeless guy uh, that was an, a DJ before on a radio station. And uh, he was a black guy. Anyways, or he is a black guy. Uh, and uh, he had an afro. Anyways, a guy pulled up alongside of him um, in his car and took video of him. And he had a, he, you know, he's looking for a handout, this guy. And um, he did the radio, a DJ voice. He did his radio voice. And it was just uh, really amazing. I'm really into uh, reality stuff, big time. I love reality TV. What I don't, I don't like. Um, I don't like all reality. I don't like, uh, you know, uh, Survivor, Temptation Island, uh, things like that. They only use good-looking people. I don't like stuff like that. Um, the world's not just good-looking people. The world's uh, people like me. Uh, not everybody is like my wife saying, uh, gorgeous, beautiful, smoking hot body, um, wonderful lover, uh, an amazing cook, uh, an amazing, um, uh, person to this family for taking care of us, uh, sticking up with all of my, um, antics. Bad attitude, depression, sadness, happiness, up and down. It's a roller coaster, this life, that uh, I give my wife. Uh, I mean, no malice, uh, but, you know, uh, it's reality, you know. Right now, what I'm doing is not reality because, um, you know, I've acted. And I've been in a lot of, some movies, and lots of TV commercials, and I've done a lot of radio voiceovers. Let me uh, do a few for you. Um, 106.5, Green Wave FM. 88 FM, The Peak. Welcome to Future Park Rongsid Mall. First floor, jewelry. Second floor, family. Third floor, food court. You know. So, life is not uh, acting uh, a lot of times. We go through many stages of, uh, you know, uh, different characters. Um, you know, depends on your mood. What character are you going to be? Uh, I think everybody has... Uh, <laughs> I can't get out of this stupid acting thing. I think everybody has, um, you know, um, different characters. Everybody has multiple personalities. I believe that. Um, I don't think we have different voices or different people inside our heads. Some people might, but I don't. I just have different uh, moods. And depending on my mood, that's how I am. Now, I've watched this show. Um, my, I, I really love, uh, uh, you know, I love reality stuff. So I really like um, shows uh, that like what A&E does. Um, I like uh, Dirty Jobs, which is not A&E. It's, uh, what, National Geographic or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but there is, there's one on, um, is it National Geographic? No. But there's a couple on A&E, like, um, Intervention, Love Intervention. Um, my favorite one is, uh, this boxer, uh, the champ, the champ, the champ's here. This, uh, this boxer, he hadn't been around his son, uh, he li lived in New York, I think. And, um, his son's lived over in, uh, Tacoma, Washington, right around where I'm from in Washington, and um, anyways, he hadn't seen him for like 15 years, he became a drug addict, he was a, a two-time world champion boxer, um, he got into drugs, and he lost everything, um, 
I think just fame and everything got to him, and he ended up leaving his family and stuff. Anyways, after 15 years or, or so, his uh, one son tracked him down and found him living on the street and addicted to drugs, and he, he didn't have anything left. I mean, here's a guy that was a world champion boxer for two, two times in, in his life and had a huge career and was amazing. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this because on YouTube they've made fun of it. Um, there's a... Um, there's there's a, a short clip. It's like forty seconds on uh, on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of them because people have like auto tuned him and stuff. People made fun of him, but you but it's my favorite one because you can actually feel. You know, I don't know my real dad either, and I would love. I mean, it would be amazing if I could track him down and find him one day. But it'll probably never happen. But he same thing. My my real dad, and I'll say it. I'll share it with you guys. My real dad's been in prison my whole life. Um, he was put in there for cocaine. And multiple drug charges and and uh, um, what do you what do you call it um, uh, assault charges stuff like that. Uh, I've tried to I tracked him down. I've tried to track him down a bunch of times, especially in my teen years when I was able to you know start when the computer when I was using a computer and I was able to try to you know. Um, call directory assistance and try to find him through that and 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 um I found him in another prison in Walla Walla State Penitentiary when I was 15 years old and we I contacted him and they allowed me to talk to him for 15 minutes on the phone that was the last time I talked to him but after that we wrote back and forth with each other for about six months he ended up getting in trouble and I and he wrote me a last letter told me that he had gotten in trouble he'd been um um, charged with a couple more assault charges on his roommate that that was there, and he was going to go away for a few more. They gave him like four more years or something like that. Anyways, that's my real dad. And after that, I never heard from him again. They, they, they he moved prisons, and I never heard from him again. That was the last time I ever heard from him. His name's Craig Golub. That's my, that's all I know of my dad. I did see him a couple of times when I was a kid, but he like basically split when my mom was pregnant with me. And um, he left, and then after that, he was in and out of jail, and then he spent, you know, as far as I know, he's still in prison, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, that show got me, Went watching that guy with his kids, uh, two grown boys, um, successful boys, I guess, um, and here he is, they come into the room, and he sees his boys after 15 years, and the one boy wanted a relationship with his dad, and he's the one that tracked him down after 15 years, and started the intervention uh, for the show. The other one wanted nothing to do with his dad. I think basically he only showed up that day in the intervention because of his brother. He was doing his brother a favor. But he ended up opening up his heart. And in the intervention process, they write a letter and they say, you know, your addiction has affected my life in these ways. And when he talked, when he was reading the letter to him, he says, um, he broke down. The dad was stone faced the whole time. The whole if you ever watch the whole thing, you, you'll watch it. He just he didn't cry, he didn't show any emotion for about twenty minutes. He just sat there and nothing. And when the other when the boy that didn't want a relationship with him start you know, broke down and he goes and I'll I'll act it out, he goes Cause deep down inside I still love you. And then cut to the dad and he's going. (laughs) Hey, the kids love it when I do that. I'm not making fun of the guy. They just think it's funny when I go. Anyways, type if you get if you if you want to see it, go to you know um, go on to YouTube or you're already watching YouTube. Just type it in "best cry ever" and it'll come up. It's a black guy with a couple of his black with his uh, black kid, two boys, you know, and um, it's really heartbreaking. It's heart wrenching to watch them, you know. And I've I've always liked that. It was, it's been one of my favorite, and I've watched. I think I've watched every intervention from season one, and now I think they're into season ten right now. Anyways, I've watched every one. I've downloaded them and just sat and watched them over over weeks, long, you know, a while ago. Anyways, um, there's another one called uh, Hoarders, and I love that show too. But the problem with Hoarders, when you watch some of these reality shows, oh hi, 
You gotta go put some. <laughs> she just farted. Did you hear that? Grandma, give me this. <laughs> Hannah, get up there. Chocolate milk. Oh my god, my kids don't like to wear clothes. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, there's another one called hoarders. And if you don't know what hoarding is, hoarding is when you can't let stuff go and you just collect and collect and you, even if it's garbage. I mean, garbage and garbage and garbage. You just can't let anything go. And if you watch that show, it's just amazing. Get, get, you know, if you have a chance, download it, watch it, or go on the, on the website. I think you can watch full episodes on their website. I think it's A and E, or something like that. Anyways, you you can find it. And then go into Grandma's room. I don't want people to see you just standing there in your underwear. <laughs> Anyways, um, when you watch stuff like that, reality TV and stuff, it just you find a lot of personality traits to be your own, what they're going through, and you start thinking to yourself, man, am I like that? Do I have an addictive personality? Do I want it? Do I collect things I shouldn't? You know? And <laughs> when Sang and I watch that show, you know, Sang likes to collect bottles. And because she's an artist, well, I wasn't going to show you, but here's Sang right now. She's painting. I'm not going to show you the painting because. In the next couple of days, it's going to be a, uh, one of my videos. I'm going to show it sped up. But she's now on like hour 14 of this painting, and it's a big painting. Uh, anyways, because Sang is an artist, um, she, well, you can see there's a couple of bottles over there. She shouldn't let bottles go. Little jars, baby jars, different containers like that you can keep, that you can, you know, have a, top on them so you can put stuff in there keep it as storage you know she'll just keep it and i'm constantly going through the room and she'll wash it and then save it for something and i'll sneak and throw it away or something you know <laughs> but when you watch that show before i never thought about it until we watched hoarders and it was like man now i just i want to i don't want to be part i don't want to be like that so we like when we first started watching that it makes you really think about your own life we man we tossed out all kinds of stuff i mean we even my mom she went she was telling me because i you know i she watched it too and uh, i sent it sent her all the videos and she watched it on her computer even when she watched it she said the same thing man i see a lot of things that i don't need and i so she just trashed a bunch of stuff hi no, you can't ride your bicycle right now. It's too hot outside. Too and sun. I don't want you to get burned. Anyways, so yeah, watching reality shows like that, it really makes you think about your life. And then actually, because we watch those shows, it's actually helped our lives. I know it has. I know the way that I do things or did things before. I don't do those things anymore. I don't save stuff that I that are un, stuff that's not unnecessary. I don't do that because I don't want to keep a bunch of garbage down or, around. It's okay. Okay, go in Grandma's room. There's no, there's no spider. Get away down! Oh, that's not a spider. That's fine. That's a daddy long legs. It ain't gonna hurt me. Go in Grandma's room so I can finish. No, you guys go in Grandma's room, please. I'm, I, I've lost my concentration now. <laughs> they should have a TV show called Concentration. And if you've got three kids yelling at you from behind constantly, see how long you can keep your concentration and your train of thought. I would lose. What was I talking about? Hoarding. Hoarding? Yeah, hoarding. 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 See? Concentration. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Because I know deep down inside I still love you. <laughs> so fun so anyways yeah that's my vlog today talking about how tv shows actually do help you because i'll tell you what after i watched those shows i have made uh, a lot of changes oh and the guy the dj the guy the homeless guy he's like i mean after they picked that up after it went on i think it went on youtube and it became a viral video after that like news news channels start picked it up 
And that guy's life has totally changed. He now has a job working, I think it's in Cincinnati. He has a job working for like the, a local sports team as an announcer now. And he's, they bought him a house, they bought him a car, they gave him a good paying job. He now has a f- total haircut has changed, everything. I mean, he looks like a clean cut guy. And his whole life has changed. Just that one second where guy was driving and pulled up to the guy and started talking to him. And the guy busted out this amazing voice, this amazing announcer's voice. You know, it was just amazing. And now that guy's whole life has changed. Reality. Reality, Survivor, and Temptation Island, and dating shows. That's not reality. That's Hollywood. That doesn't have anything. But going into people's homes and showing how they live and showing how dysfunction works in their lives and doesn't work in their lives, it's crazy. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, our household is 50-50. I, I know that I am a... I'm not the easiest person to get along with, but I'm a good provider and I'm a good guy and sometimes I get depressed, but Sang, she's a, she's my rock, you know, she's, she's my, you know, uh, I used to live on, I used to have my house on sand, but now my house is on rock. I built it around stone and it's not going to fall down ever again. And so I'm very thankful for that. And that's reality. That is reality for me. So thanks for listening to me yammer today. And I love you guys very much. And Sang loves you very much. I know you guys want to see that painting really bad. It's amazing. And you guys will love it. But you're going to have to wait for a couple of days. She's almost done. She's on like on the last two hours. And there's the other flip. And she's totally taped it from start to finish. And you guys, and I've sped it up. Different sections that I've done already and edited. And you guys will love it. So we love you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching The Hathaways. Brain fart! Ah! Chipmunk! <laughs>